Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are talking about the Corgi engine. Now, this one has gotten a number of requests, and I have to start off by saying, no, it is not an engine. What it is is basically, I guess we could call it a framework for creating 2D games, specifically platformers and side-scroller style games. This is an extension for Unity, and by the way, it is also currently on sale as part of their ongoing... Uh, Super sale or whatever the heck they're calling it right now, Cyber Week sale, whatever. This thing ends on December 4th. Right now, you can get it half price. Normally 60 bucks, right now it's 30 bucks. And this one is very much, again, about creating platformer and side scroller type games. It provides all of the code you need to create those games. In some ways, you could actually just bring this in and almost start dragging and dropping your games, and then you just sort of have to customize the parts that don't fit to your requirements. Also, by the way, if uh, two and two and a half D platformers aren't your thing or side scrollers, they've also got one for creating top-down style game engines, so things like um, you know Bomberman, the old school Zelda, etc. And they also have one here for creating racing style games and one here for creating infinite runner style games, all kind of built around the same basic concept. Now, the nice thing about the Corgi engine, which by the way, if you want to learn more about it, is available at corgi-engine.moremountains.com. I will, of course, link that down below, and it is nicely documented, which is good to see as well. So all of the stuff that goes together, and there's a lot of it. There's a lot of moving pieces here, so you're going to appreciate the documentation if you pick up the Corgi engine. All right, that is enough kind of overview. Let us jump in and take a look. So here I am. This is a um, standard scene, 2D scene. I have already imported in the Corgi engine. Do be aware when you import it in using Asset Manager, it will overwrite your current project. So create a new project. I created a 2D project, and here we are now. Uh, once you get started, what you're going to probably immediately want to do is jump in and check out some of the examples here. For example, is Bro Bro, and this is uh, what is it? Bro Force, basically style clone, 2D level game. A couple of key things are being illustrated here. You can see here the the map that is generated. We've got a couple of key things going on. There are uh, the camera being created. You can see there's a number of uh, add-ons being done for it. So the GUI manager for doing overlays, etc., and input manager. And and this is one of those areas where Corgi gets a little interesting because they do things like handle input management. They created scripts for doing that. But slowly, it's like Unity discovered. Oh wait, hey, there's 2D games out there, and maybe we should create some tooling for it. So you're gonna run into some in like overlap where you're gonna have to go. Should I use the Corgi system or should I use the the Unity system. The nice thing is you can mix and match wherever you wish. You'll notice here we have the level start. That is basically your your spawn point here. Uh, you can pick which direction to spawn from. The key things here also is you've got your game manager. This has got the various different managers that are you know kind of the heartbeat of your game. You notice game manager here, sound manager, achievements not called manager oddly enough, and MM time manager. We go down here. You're gonna see Corgi engine. This is where like the guts of Corgi are implemented. Is a variety of different scripts. You can see here we have the various different managers there, including multiplayer level manager. Yes, there is multiplayer support in here. The other key guy that you've got going on here is the level manager. Every level is going to have one of these things, and what it does is ties some key things together. The key one, of course, is going to be your character. So you see here we have one character prefab of type spine bro bro. Yes, it uses spine animation in this particular case. Uh, you can have multiple characters if you so wish, which is actually kind of cool. I'll show you that in a little bit. And you show how to ease it in, ease it out, tween between different levels, and so on. Your game can consist of multiple different levels. We'll go ahead and see this guy in action right now. Um, it's WASD keys to navigate. Uh, you've got so you got the logic for climbing up ladders. Uh, you got the logic for shooting, handling collisions, and so on. So th there is your basic one of your levels to work from. The cool thing about Corgi is there are a ton of different examples to go through. So here is uh, a lava example. Uh, we've got a 3D example, which is actually. Bah, 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 bah. You're in a 3D level here. Everything is 3D, normal camera in action, but it is uh, 2D. Uh it's still a 2D style game. So yes, Corgi can work in 3D as well. We've got the minimals. We're going to come back to that in just a minute now. Uh, we've got uh, pixel-based levels. Let's show you that right now. So you got a ton of different examples. This one actually shows the dynamic lighting. This is one of the thing, another thing that Unity has added since. But you can notice as we walk around, we've got dynamic lighting and ray casting lighting going on here as well. Um, one of the cool examples here is under the retro. You get a ton of different retro styles, but let's do a retrovania clone here. It'll showcase uh, some of the, the features we've got going on here. So you see here, we've got room teleporter. So you can go from one location to another. You can show how you can kind of 
uh, string together a non-trivial level. We got parallax backgrounds that are gonna scroll by in the background and so on. Uh, we've got things for managing moving between rooms. And then if I come down here, we go to the level area, grid, you'll notice here I can come up windows, 2D, and then tile palette. You see we've got traditional tile based. So here you go, you create your own tile level. Uh, it should do smart tiles, handles the the inter uh, the um, the interaction between the various different smart tiles that are going on. So that is another one of your examples. Now, if you want to get in here and start with your own, you know, I, okay, I've got Corgi. I played around with a number of examples. I see how all these various different pieces work together. I see things like uh, moving tiles or moving platforms and so on. How do I go ahead and use this stuff? Well, the way you're going to probably want to start things off is create your own new level. I'm not going to save my changes. All right, so here we are. I'm going to go here into... Um, uh, where did you go? It's minimal. Okay, minimal. And then you pick kind of where you want to start from here. So you got minimal, minimal. This is literally as minimal as you get. You got pixel perfect examples, slope, spawner, stairs, uh, four player, or uh, local play, and, and so on. Gravity management. You can have different gravity per room. You got all these minimal level examples to start from. But what you want to probably do is drop in a minimal, minimal level. All right, so we got uh, complete prefab in here. That's to start things off. So here you can see very simple example. You have your camera here. You have your level spawn point right there. You got a set of tiles set up with collisions on them. So these are going to keep you from, you know, box colliders, keep you from falling off the world or whatever. But here is your very, very minimal level. Over here, we got a simple UI to work with. And now that you've got a simple level to work from, once again, game manager is defined for you, key part, and then your level manager here. Your level manager is creating a prefab character right here of type rectangle. So go ahead and run this guy. You're gonna see that simple character right there. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. So well-defined, cool, good to go. Now what we can do is go ahead, if we wanted, go to uh, Corgi 2D, prefabs, playable characters, and we got sprite sheet based um, characters or spine based characters. Let's do the sprite sheet based Corgi and we'll drop one into our world. It's actually gonna end up with two of them with the way that was implemented. So I'm gonna come down here. We're gonna to go to the level manager as I was talking about earlier on, and let's just turn that into two. So now we've got two characters there. Let's pick this guy. Uh, we will select our, all right, why are you not there yet? Hmm, one second. All right, that was definitely my bad. I dropped it outside of the level. All right, so we go ahead here, Corgi, prefabs, characters, playable characters, and we'll drop him into the actual level. There we go. So there he is. Now I'm gonna again go back to the level manager, pick this guy right here, and there is our Corgi. All right, we're good to go. So let's just double select that guy. So now we have the two characters being run. Go ahead and see the example going on. And here, so now we've got the same set of controls are handling both our Corgi and our Rectangle. Now you're gonna notice each one of these guys has a separate, it's like a slightly different speed going on or whatever there. Uh, that is because each one of these has like a different, so if you open up that prefab, you're gonna see uh, a number of different details actually controlling him. He's got uh, a number of attributes or scripts that are attached to him. So you've got the Corgi controller handles how all the various different platform style interactions going on, where the character bounds out, the level character details, and we got some things here for horizontal, vertical movement, crouching, diving, uh, jet pack, jumping, and so on. So depending on how your character controls, you have all of these different uh, attributes for controlling how he would work in a typical platforming game, including right up to supporting swimming and so on. So you can easily bring in multiple different characters. The even cooler thing is we can actually go ahead and create completely uh, new stuff. So let's go ahead here, uh, bring in an enemy. All right, where did you go? I don't want an, I don't want that. I want a sprite. All right, sprite enemies. All right, so we're gonna have an enemy cactus now. So let's just drop an enemy into the world. There we go. So we now have an enemy. Oops, keep doing the same problem. All right, cactus, drop him into our level. We have an enemy. All right, where did you show up? I don't know why this level is so off center, but oh well, let's bring this guy in. And drop this guy down. Let's zoom in. All right, so there we go. So we just brought in, all we've done right now is created a base sprite. So to turn this guy into uh, a character in the world, we basically come on in here. We go to Corgi Engine. Uh, we'll go ahead and select Character, Core, 
And then you see here, just add a character script to it. So with that attached now, we can come down here and auto build him and we can turn him into an AI character. Now you notice this just kind of set up a bunch of uh, pre-configured for us. Now it's got a uh, typical AI. This guy, by default, he's gonna basically walk here to here. And if he hits things, our Corgi guy has some, uh, you know, overlap kind of logic put about him. So that's how easy you could bring in your own base character. So he's gonna go wandering off and then he's gonna show up right back this way. And he's going to go on a corgi killing spree in just a second. There you go. And there you see. So you, you can get really uh, quickly. You can come in, create your minimum level. You start instancing new stuff in and off you go. And, and this it's the same deal for, uh, let's bring in something like a platform. Let's find a platform that looks good. I want something flat on the top. There we go. All right. Platform six. Let's drop one of these into the world like so. So there we have it here in the world we want to start making this into a platform style game again just come on back down here corgi engine environment you're going to notice a ton of different settings here for it so a flying falling platform or so on uh, so what i'm going to create is a moving platform all right so there we're done we got a moving platform we can define this guy is cycling back and forth uh, with that now selected i'm going to go ahead and say okay path let's do a two point path on that one let's pick the first point and let's put it right there. And then the second point, we will put it right there. And movement speed, we'll set that to five. And then boom. So now we have a platform in the world. And once again, you've got all these options for controlling how that platform will show up. There you go. And the platform goes across the world and back and out. And you basically just start using all of these built-in Corgi engine classes to start building up your 2D platform style game. So you see here, we have a pretty comprehensive set of things. We got something here for background music, camera controls, uh, parallel effects, and so on. Uh, all these various different things for the character, for uh, health, life, taking damage, giving damage. Um, and then we got the environment. So we saw there, uh, we did um, the uh, moving platform there. We've also got logic here for a ladder or ledges or teleporting between different locations, zoning in, zoning out, creating zip lines, and so on. Um, Oops, I meant to hit items. Items here for logic like coins, pickups, stars, modifiers, and so on. And of course, you could take and clone this code, make it however you want. We saw the various different managers that are required by your game managers at the top here. And you got spawn points for beginning and finishing the level, switching between levels, and so on. And then we have weapons. And on top of that, there's also support in here for inventory systems. And that... That, in a nutshell, is the very basics of Corgi Engine. Now, obviously, you're seeing dozens and dozens and dozens of moving systems in action here, but I showed you the basics of how you work with them and uh, really what you're going to want to do. So just pick this guy up. If this looks interesting to you, you're going to pick it up, and then you're just going to kind of come in and get into these uh, various different examples. So, for example, if you wanted to come in here and learn about... Uh, so we're in the minimal. If you wanted to learn about gravity, so just come on in here, pick up features, gravity. Yeah, we won't save our masterpiece. And you see kind of an example that showcases how gravity works. And you can have multiple different sets of gravity in multiple different worlds. And then you sort of start learning from there. So the individual thing that you're going to want to learn from, you can... You've got all these various different examples, kind of showcase how things work. You're gonna notice a lot of examples have these background text layers that kind of walk you through it. So that's what you're gonna to wanna to do. You're gonna to wanna to jump in, grab some of these examples. And again, you saw, we have a few of the examples that are full blown games. So you can kind of work your way back from there, like a simple single level uh, Metrovania style game. There's a Mario style title in there. Uh, there's the Bro Force clone kind of thing and so on. You can just kind of jump into those and start figuring it out. But realistically, what this is, is giving you a bunch of Lego pieces. A lot of it as scripts, some of it as tools like you saw when we attached a character to it we can have it automatically set up and configure characters for us um, and really all you need the guaranteed thing that you need in every one of your your levels you need a level manager and you need a man, let me just stop stop there you need your game manager you need your level manager and you need a level and that's it the rest of it, you go from there. So what I would on, honestly recommend doing is come on in, starting with the absolute minimum level, just instantiate that prefab and go from there and uh, start you know, applying their scripts to stuff, see how they work together. And you're probably gonna be where you wanna be in a very short period of time. And then once again, you've got a good solid set of documentations here to walk you through how the various different things work, how you can set up characters, the animations on them. Again, you can have inventory. There is an inventory system in here, which does lead me to uh, one little bit of 
of confusion on this one. Um, or on gravity, we got basics on setting things up in general. And then speaking of general, we got things like how to switch between rooms, all the various different events that are available. And then finally, we have full API documentation for all of the classes that are available. So if you want to look up the, the instructions from, you know, Corgi Engine, for example, here, achievement rules, you want to see how achievements work, there is the C Sharp code all documented for you. So again, the only real question mark I have from the Corgi Engine is where it ends. So here's Corgi Engine 2D and 2.5D and platformer. And then you've got an inventory engine. Is that is this piece basically included in here? And I'm also a little curious to the degree of overlap between the top-down engine, uh, the Infinite Runner engine, and the high road and the racing. Oh no, that would be completely different. So these three, I don't know how much overlap is between them because realistically, the difference between a side-scrolling and a top-down game are kind of minimal. But it is going to be like the set of classes and building blocks you are working from. But if you're working on a different style of game, if you're more into the Zelda-type title. Um, or infinite runner style title, those might be a better fit for you. But I honestly, I just don't get where this particular piece, piece fits in. And then another issue with Corgi Engine, this isn't really Corgi Engine's fault per se, uh, but the, um, the fact that Unity is now paying attention to 2D means you're going to get some overlap. You're gonna have some confusion. It's like, okay, well, there's a Corgi Engine input manager, and now Unity has their own input manager. Which ones do you want to work with? Or how do you want it to go? And I got to imagine a lot of the Corgi Engine stuff is dependent on the other Corgi Engine stuff. And there's no reason why it, it isn't perfectly fine to do it all the Corgi Engine way. But you get an idea of the kind of stuff that is provided here out of the box. And it's most of what you would need to create um, a 2D or 2.5D style platformer or side-scrolling game. I do have to admit, they've covered all of the bases here. So if that's the type of game you want to create and you don't want to go about creating all of this crap yourself, uh, Corgi Engine definitely will give you a head up. It will take months off of your game's development for sure. So when you're looking at that as a $30 purchase, Hard to beat that, to be honest. If what you see here is the style of game you're trying to create, otherwise you start getting into, you know, trying to fit a, you know, square peg into a round hole scenario pretty fast. But for the most part, uh, that is Corgi Engine. A quick look at it. Uh, let me know if you've used it, what you think of it, or if you've used a different 2D style game creator, or you're just using Unity out of the box. Uh, if you have an alternative suggestion, I would love to hear it in the comments down below. But that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.